Some time ago, I posted a video titled Exposing a Service Using 3Scale API Management Platform. And you can see the Vscale admin user interface is shown here. As of last month, Vscale has actually changed the whole user interface. The reason being that uh, as customers are using more and more APIs, they're finding that in order to manage the APIs, they have to jump around all these different menus, for example, including application, uh, API, settings, ad active docs, etc. And sometimes it's really difficult to find a particular setting for a particular feature that they need to change. The other reason is that Vscale wants to align the look and feel of Vscale admin API or admin user interface to that of the Red Hat middleware portfolio. So as a result of the change, the UI is aligned with uh, the other Red Hat middleware. Now let us look at uh, the uh, changed UI. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you are going to use the uh, modified user interface to actually do the same thing, that is expose a service using Vscale API management using the new graphical user interface. Let me switch to the new admin user interface. So when you log in, the first thing you, you're going to see is the dashboard. It's going to tell you how, many, how much traffic you have in all your APIs. Right, if you want to expose a service using API, if you, this is the first time you're doing it, that means you have to create a access token. To do that, you have to click on this gear uh, symbol here on the top right hand corner, click on it. And you can see that because I've used this admin interface before, I already generated the XX token. But if you don't have one, what you need to do is to click on the access token and click on add access token here. Give it a name, you should uh, check all these check boxes and then change the read only permission to read and write. Right? Since I already got uh, so many tokens, I'm not going to uh, create another one. Right? That is the first step. If I go back to the dashboard, you can see that it's a new API menu here. You can just click on it to create a new API. Just give it a name. Just call it uh, demo API, system name, demo API. Click on add API. Next thing you want to do is do the configuration. You can look at the edit integration settings. So you should, if you've used the old user interface before, this page should be quite familiar to you, right? This is selecting the gateway, whether you use, want to use the fee scale provided gateway, or you want to use a gateway deployed at your location, right? In this particular, uh, video, I'm going to use the Vscale API. And I'm going to use the API key uh, that is tied to the access token you just uh, created. Now let's update the service. Click it. By default, Vscale provides you with the Echo API, but I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use this one. It's a service that provides you flight information. Before I do anything, let's save it first. Next thing you want to do is to define the mapping rules. Basically, define the path to access your service. Before you can do that, first of all, you have to click on Define, click on the new method. Let's call it Get Flights. System name again, Get Flights. Create method. 
Now you can go back the con to the configuration now. In here, you can say add mapping root. Select the get flights, which is the method we just created. And then you have to provide the path for it. So this is the path. So what is this uh, first one, get hit? If you should have more than one method, like uh, a bunch of get methods and some post methods, you want it to count, well, each one of these methods will give you a count of how many times it has been used in a certain period. And this one is a catch-all, so it will match any one of those. So it will also count the total number of all the hits as well. You will see that here it actually provides you the curl command, but there is no user key. So it, the user key does not appear unless until you actually created an application plan and create an application accessing that plan. And then it will actually provide you with the user key to access the particular API. Let's do that now. You see here, you can actually click on this one, start with creating an application plan. As I said earlier, first of all, you have to create an application plan. Click create and give it a name. I just call it my limited plan and click create. And if I click on my limited plan, you can actually see that uh, for this one, I can create a limit. For example, if I say new usage limit, I can, for example, specify minute. For each minute, I'm not going to be allow people use more than five. Trans well, call this uh, particular API more than five times. So to create. And also, if you should charge for your API, you can actually configure the pricing as well. You can click pricing, new pricing rule. Say that for the first 100, it's free of charge. And for 100 onwards, you're going to charge it uh, this much per call. Right, you can see it right now. So now you can update your application plan. Remember, if you want it to be active, publish it. Click on publish. Now you have created your application plan. The next thing you need to do is before that user key will appear is to create an application which uses this application plan. To do that, you have to go to audience and select a user. And this particular user already got seven applications, right? but you have to create a new one. Just click on applications and then you have a create applications. The new applications, let's use the application plan we just uh, created. My limited plan, I'm giving this application a name. Now, if I go to integration again, configuration, edit API cast configuration. I forgot to save it. I have to, that means I have to do this again. Add mapping, get files. Well, 
whatever you do, save it first. Now you see that the user key now appears. Now in order to test that, I have to actually provide the path. So if I update the test, so all is well. Now I can go back to integration and configuration. And then I can promote V3. Now, how do I test this out? What you can do is you can click on configuration again. Uh, get this, copy this. Now, let us bring up a command line. Place that in there, it gives you the result. Oh, let's make it a bit prettier. Oh, that is the JSON return from this particular API. And now you have actually expose that particular surface using the Freescale API management platform. Thank you for watching.